Welcome everyone to the online retail marketplace. I think this is the first, is this the first? The first one of these presentations at uh, IRCE. Uh, the discussion topic today is differentiating your brand through intelligent campaigns, product SKUs, and merchandising promos. Uh, I'm Eric Heller, CEO of Marketplace Ignition. With me is, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Sylvan Bailey from the OSP Group. I'm Jody Shaw with Hey Needle. Tony Shavala, Vice President of Marketplace for Sears. And I'm Eric Best, CEO at Mercent. Excellent. So, based on retailer feedback, one of the most top, we thought this would be one of the most top of mind topics for merchants competing today in, in the highly dynamic e-commerce marketplace environment. And uh, with the panel of experts, we're focused on providing you with insights for cracking the code on what it takes to drive meaningful brand differentiation and bottom line profits. Starting is going to be Eric Best, who's going to give some data that Mercen has collected that talks about what's going on in Marketplace and some of the overall trends they're seeing. Yes, yeah, so I'm really, thanks Eric. Uh, really pleased to have everyone here. We've got a good panel representing uh, both Mercen customers as well as important uh, partners uh, and channel partners. And just to set the stage for the conversation, I just want to talk a little bit about what our clients are seeing. Um, as a reminder, Mercen serves 550 major uh, retail brands and we're helping them sell uh, and promote their products on channels like Amazon, eBay, Sears Marketplace, Google, Pinterest, and, and about 200 other uh, online shopping destinations. Uh, we have some data here that I'll just quickly run through, uh, which is uh, 12 months trailing, same seller year-over-year -year sales performance. As we look back across the last 12 months across our portfolio, some really interesting uh, trends are emerging. One is that we're seeing that Amazon, which has been a uh, very strong contributor to our business over, over the years, continues to grow in excess of the organic uh, e-commerce growth rate at uh, roughly 25 to 30%. That is a bit of a deceleration from the growth rate that we've seen from Amazon in the past. Uh, we've seen growth as high as 40 to 50%. Again, this is just for third-party sellers uh, on Amazon. If we look at other categories of channels that we serve, Google, we have to talk about Google and the uh, shopping campaigns program, formerly product listing ads. Uh, Google, of course, changed from a free to pay to play program in June of 2012. And since then, we've seen the, the growth of that program accelerate significantly from the mid 20% range up into the 40 to 50% year over year same seller range. Um, Lastly, when we look at shopping engines, comparison shopping engines like uh, eBay Commerce Network and others, generally speaking, those, those channels are performing in line with organic e-commerce growth. And in particular, we're seeing strength from companies that have an affiliation with stronger uh, online platforms like eBay. Challenges, on the other hand, from uh, shopping engines where uh, a lot of the traffic dependency uh, lay with uh, Google organic and, and paid search in the past. So just that kind of provides an overview of, of what we're seeing in the marketplace at Mercen. Excellent. So next we're going to have Tony talk about uh, some of the developments, the Sears marketplace. They've got some exciting things that they've changed. Tony, do you want to show sure. some of your slides? Sure. So um, just to kind of set the stage, one of the things that we've seen is 30% uh, year over year growth in marketplace of Sears. Um, we've also had uh, some pretty explosive SKU growth. We're up to about 120 million. Um, so, and, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to really be able to put our technology around the seller community and how do we make it a important channel for the sellers to be able to sell their products and equally important to be able to serve our members. So, what we've done is we've kind of centered our technology around a couple of core areas. So, one of which is uh, seller support. Uh, and that's everything as far as being able to convert sellers' feeds into the Sears taxonomy to um, a tiering program. So that's what I call more of the carrot instead of a stick. So as our sellers progress, both in sales and as well as in delivery and fulfillment, um, we give them different things along with that, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, and then from there, just making sure that we're offering a platform that gives price competitiveness, um, everything from buy box integration, et cetera. So on the next slide, um, this is, these are some of the things that we're giving our different tiers, and as you grow and progress up each of the tiers into a platinum, um, what you'll be getting is free marketing and promotion, so that's everything from banner ads to display ads on Sears and Kmart, um, all the way to different types of search boost, uh, dedicated account management, 
and um, customized seller storefronts. You know, we have a couple of examples later that we can kind of go into, but being able to have essentially your own storefront being marketed to our customers and members. Um, and then also, a very important aspect of Sears right now that you've probably heard about and read about is the Shop Your Way Members Program. So we're also going to be offering that. Uh, we offer that today where you can earn points on marketplace items. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be able to uh, allow our customers and members to burn points. And that's essentially how we're going to increase traffic beyond the traditional traffic avenues that we have today. Excellent. And then, um, yes, with integrated retail, this is another aspect or facet that we're offering our sellers. Essentially bringing them into the physical Sears store to offer their assortment. Um, a lot of sellers initially got a little worried uh, because if they're not based there, it creates a tax nexus. Uh, the way that we've structured that, we've eliminated the tax nexus uh, issue. Uh, it becomes a sold by Sears item, so there is no responsibility for the seller. But um, what, it, what it does, and I don't know if you can see it real well on the slide, is it's a really an interactive way for people to come in, see product they wouldn't see at Sears, number one, interact with it, number two, buy it at that moment, and it will ship to them in two days or less. Um, they will not be able to take it with them in this program, and that's part of the way that we can negate tax nexus for our sellers. Excellent. So, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions on nexus for you after this. I'm sure. So, um, Jody and Sylvan, how do you how do you think about when you're trying to decide how to allocate resources, which marketplaces, where uh, where the most opportunity for growth is? How do you think about where to invest? I think the, the first thing we look at is really the number of new customers. So today on Amazon, uh, for us, for OSP Group, most of the customers coming from Amazon are new to us. So it's brand new, we're not cannibalizing our sales from our own site. So that's really good, it's the, the first thing. Tomorrow, if we see that this customer rate, new customer rate is decreasing, going to only 50%, it becomes a risk and we might want to sell on Amazon anymore, but today we're really happy and I think it's probably what you would see on any marketplace. Um, marketplace customers are very very loyal to their marketplace, so most of the time you'll find new customers there, so it's, this is really the main thing we're, we're looking for. Jerry? So for Hayneedle, I think the biggest piece for us is, you know, when we consider where we want to invest and where we want to really kind of hang our hat for marketplace specifically, um, you know, where, where is the assortment actually going to work? So each marketplace platform is very different, um, not from the technology so much, but just from what customers are actually looking for. So for example, on Amazon, a customer may respond to a sofa or something, where on eBay, that customer wouldn't even pay any attention to that same SKU. So when we think about that, we actually curate our assortment a little bit differently, depending on which marketplace we're looking at, um, to make sure that we can maximize both for the customer and for our own bottom line. I think, um, you know, I, I think both of you spoke to something that we were going to talk about anyway, which is this idea that each marketplace has its own seasonality, customer, demographics. I think one of the things that uh, we wanted to talk about today when we talked in preparation for this is this idea that, uh, you know, are we still seeing where each, each uh, marketplace cultivates its own customer and is therefore uniquely valuable? You know, we talked, you know, and uh, I mean, maybe each of you could speak to that, but the data that you have still shows that, right? That there's very low uh, overlap on a Sears customer for an Amazon versus an eBay customer, right? Yeah, for us, the, the overlap is very small. Basically, most of the Amazon customers are new to us. Um, the demographic is different. It's, Usually a lower AOV. Um. Well, I, I think too, Eric, as, as we were discussing a little bit before, I think it's that advent of age where Amazon, you know, was the pioneer up front and first. And now you're having catch up with a lot of the traditional retailers that have a different following. And I think that's what you're seeing a possible distraction to. So uh, I think, Jody, you and Sylvan both brought uh, slides to talk about some real-world day-to-day tactics. Do you want to talk to some of those? Sure. 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 Excellent. Um, so when I think about uh, Marketplace specifically, so I've been in this game for probably about three years um, with my company. Um, the great thing about Hayneedle is it wasn't an existing business. We actually built it with Mercent, which is fantastic, uh, but we built it from the ground up, and I've been along the ride the entire time. So I've kind of stumbled through the weeds, if you will, but then we've also seen a lot of success, um, and there's still things to learn. 
but when I think about kind of the day-to-day -day tactics, I guess there's, you know, keys for success, right? Every business has a key for success. And each marketplace is slightly different, but when I think about it, the themes are all the same. And I don't know, do we have it? No. So the themes are all relatively the same. Um, when we think about uh, the imaging, previous. content, sorry. He's, he's gonna go back, Sylvan no. thinks it's the previous slide. Oh. So sorry. content, imaging, minor fail here. Um, pricing, there you go. Okay. optimizing your data. I couldn't, I couldn't um, express how important um, actually optimizing your data really is. So one, get your SKUs up on the marketplace, get it available for customers to see. But once you actually have that SKU up or your entire assortment up, that's where you go in and you kind of find those little nuggets um, where maybe it's a keyword addition or maybe you modify um, your product title slightly or perhaps you have um, an, an additional image so that the customer has a different vantage point to view that particular item. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the keys that I think is important on Marketplace too is when a customer is looking at an item, they're not necessarily reading the content. So yeah, content is important, but they're actually looking at that picture expecting to get exactly what that picture has in it. So, you know, for a home furnishings retailer like me, you know, you would be looking at an entire like living room set. You would see the sofa, the love seat, the, the coffee tables, the perhaps lamp. Well, a customer is going to see that on Amazon or an eBay, and they're going to think that they're probably going to get that entire collection for that one low price. Not necessarily the case, right? So if you're going to display a product in kind of a lifestyle type image, you need to make sure that you are very explicit with your content um, to try to head off some of those customer service type issue, issues. So I'm actually a real world uh, issue that happened with Sylvan and I were talking, I think six months ago, they had that exact issue with a, a patio set where it was, the, remember it was the table and the umbrella and I think the, the item for sale was the umbrella and customers are complaining that for 49 bucks they didn't get four chairs, the table, the umbrella, and free shipping. And um, and I just remember, you and I, we couldn't believe that customers thought they were getting that, but changing the image and putting the lifestyle image second fixed that. One other thing I want to speak to, because I thought what you said was really, um, I think a lot of retailers make this mistake. So just yesterday we were working with a, a company that is taking between four and six weeks to launch all their content. It's got to go to legal. It's got to go back around to brand. It's got to go back. And we, we told them, we said, you know, you're, you're losing so much time. It's like you're trying to, uh, you're trying to uh, win the war by winning every battle. And instead, if you can try and win the war by just incrementally just getting the product live, then getting sufficient product live so that you can then get the orders in and then work on the ones that people want to see to get them correctly categorized and then correctly. And I think it, it speaks to exactly what you were saying. I, yeah. I don't want to take, Sylvan, you're, I'm, yeah, I hope yeah. I'm teeing you up. <laughs> to your point about making sure you have all your SKUs live, we actually have been on that. At the beginning when we started on Amazon, we were on Amazon for a few months and we didn't realize that we had like that, maybe 20 or 30,000 SKUs that were not live because of the inventory threshold that was set up at 15. So if we didn't have at least 15 units in stock for that specific product, we wouldn't send it to Amazon. So thanks to Mercent technology and the help from Marketplace Ignition, we have the tool to easily lower that threshold and all of a sudden our Amazon business started to pick up and we started seeing triple digit growth just by lowering that inventory threshold. So make sure all your SKUs at the size, color level, all the child SKUs are live. This is the first step and it's a quick win. Absolutely. Eric, that's a, just a comment on that for a minute. So th this is a common uh, scenario that we see where uh, our customers start with a, a very conservative set of rules and assumptions around marketplace selling and then as they dial in the fulfillment capabilities, fulfillment latency, get more comfortable with the idea of more real-time inventory management, then we can actually tighten up those tolerances a lot and get a lot more sell through. It's perfectly acceptable to have safety stock, you know, particularly if you're selling a lot of channels. Yeah. One of the things that Sylvan and I went and looked at was setting it at a carte blanche number is, the, is, is not the right approach. That was the first thing we really, you know, what we did was we went back and said, look, you're only selling two of these a week. It doesn't make sense to protect 15. So to really come in and be sophisticated about the volume and velocity which you're selling, and that was, I think, the big win for, for OSP. The second thing up there that you, we just blew by, I don't know whose point that was, it might have been yours, Jody, was make sure you profit on the first order. Yeah. So the market, I think everyone, everyone's seen the data. 
marketplace buyers are marketplace buyers. They're not your buyers. So, you know, when we talk about the low overlap with Sears, with Amazon, with your own site, that's great, but that's because they're Sears buyers. And so you need to make sure that you're profiting on that first order because they may come back and buy from another seller or from Sears. So you don't want to sort of, you don't want to invest in any Sears, Amazon or whatnot, hoping that you'll get another follow on order from those customers. They always make sure you're making money on the first order. Sure, a lot of head nods, so. <laughs> Um, did you want to talk to these slides? Uh, sure, we can. I mean, what we wanted to do is give a couple examples of um, you know the benefits that we're giving our, our tiered sellers today. So, behind me is uh, a couple of ways that we do it with display ads, uh, banner ads, uh, bottom ads, site profile ads uh, that we do for um, seller promotions. Uh, and we work a lot with them on that. The next slide uh, will show us some of the landing pages. So, this is an example of Lands End, which. I think you all know as a spun off from Sears, uh, but nonetheless, they're still on our platform. And um, what we've done there is put a kind of a branded um, uh, shopping page, shopping uh, boutique for them together. We do that for other sellers as well. Uh, on the next page, we have um, collections. So these are what we call that page collections that we do with a lot of Sears promotions. So Sears could have the Father's Day Craftsman promotion. We will also accessorize that with relevant type, either HA or home appliances, I should say, um, tools and things of that nature. On the next slide, sorry, no problem. Um, we have uh, hot deals, which actually parlays into one more slide, which is the last one, which is the uh, it should be the deal heist slide. And so we, so what we've done with that is essentially created. Um, a flash experience. So instead of a deal of the day that Amazon has and some other retailers, uh, we crafted it more like a uh, special experience that's on there for a certain period of time, it's gone. Uh, you'll never find the prices any lower than that at that period of time. Uh, and we also staff uh, a lot of sellers' products on there as well. So, Excellent. I, we had a lot of questions, but I think we ended up having a lot of dialogue already. So I don't know, do you want us to go through some of the discussion points or should we just ask if there's anything we didn't get to here and then take I questions from the crowd? Or? High level in terms of this theme that we've touched on today, which is marketplace selling and best practices for uh, retailers. I mean, we all have uh, mature businesses, whether it's on the seller side or whether it's on the channel side. Maybe we should just go through and, and talk about kind of summary points and, and uh, the takeaways for uh, retailers that are looking to capitalize on these opportunities. Sure. Sylvan, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I mean, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit, but number one is making sure the marketplace has a lot of new customers that are not already buying on your site. Number two is to make sure you're going to make profit on that first order because on paid search or affiliates, it's okay to lose on the first order because your customer is going to come back later and if you look at your, your 12 months value, you'll be able to make profit within 12 months. On Amazon, it might not happen, so make sure you are profita profitable on the first order. Um, the other thing is more strategic, but something we didn't really talk about is um, Amazon or Sears sometimes can be seen as competitors because they might sell products from your competitors, but if you work with them, you might actually learn best practices on how to make your sites better and sell at the same time on those marketplaces. Uh, after it's a strategic decision. Sometimes you don't want to work with Amazon and you want to work with Sears. Sometimes it's the opposite. Um, so I, think I can think of a real world example of that. Yeah. They, but I can remember when we were looking at whether or not plus size shoppers wanted to see plus size models. Yes. And we were discussing the data that OSP had versus the data that Amazon had. And I can just remember that they were different and it made us really consider like what images do we want to show on site and what images do we want to send off site. Yes. I can remember that was a really, that was a good point. I forgot about that. Yeah, I would just, I would echo everything that Sylvan said. Um, you know, making money is kind of what Marketplace is all about, right? You're driving some volume, um, but essentially you're not keeping that customer, right? You're not going to be able to remarket re to that customer unless they're coming back to that particular Marketplace seller. Um, so I guess the most important thing, I mean, outside of what Sylvan already highlighted for you is make your money, make your money on every sale, right? It's not okay to lose money on Marketplace, at least it's not for my organization. Um, and make sure that you're tailoring um, your assortment and your prices to the Marketplace that the customer's gonna respond to. 
Sure. And I, you know, from my perspective, it's really about building uh, value for the sellers. Um, if the sellers win, we will win, our customers will win. So, um, you know, we work with Mercent on a lot of these different types of initiatives. We put technology in place to support that. Um, content, I think, was um, uh, a very good thing to bring up. It's very, very important. I mean, you have cancels and returns if you have poor content. So, you know, we're also relaying things like where we have item authority in place, where content is actually displayed for, if you have the same item, but it's sold by 16 different sellers, you see one rich content page. So it's very clear, very crisp, and other sellers can leverage that as well. Um, and then it goes down to being competitive and having buy box, which we have, and, and having the right algorithms in place so that we're serving up um, the best value to the customer overall and um, giving them a win-win and the seller because the seller will win typically 90% of the time if they're a buy box winner. Um, so it's really, from my perspective, value proposition for the sellers, which translates to our members. Excellent. Great, and maybe I'll just close by saying certainly all of these great points. Um, you know, across our portfolio, we see that not all channels are created equal. Certainly, not all marketplaces are created equal. So, just to reiterate, you know, get uh, specific with your assortment, get specific with your data uh, or content, um, and really take advantage of the unique uh, opportunities available with each of the individual channels in which you're active. Excellent. So, with that. Why don't we see, are there any questions in the, uh, from the audience? Sure. Sure. Uh, who you wants to repeat the question? Sure. The question was, could we talk a little about some of the content pitfalls uh, going direct versus the content you would use in Marketplace? Um, uh, I have some thoughts, but I'll go last. So, do you want to? Uh, do any of you want to talk to that? I can kick it off. Um, so, I know for my site specifically. So, we're HayNeedle.com, and we actually do a lot of our own product development with some of our goods. Um, and so, the language and, and some of the things that we use on our own core site is very different than what a marketplace seller or a marketplace business is going to want to actually see. Um, we talk a lot about the quality of the product. We talk a lot about the brand of the product, the vendor. Um, you know, we may even use some language in there that actually it's a hay needle exclusive type item. So what we found is, I mean, those types of things are kind of no-nos for Marketplace, even though we might be the exclusive seller of that particular product on Amazon because we made it, we went to the manufacturer and brought it in ourselves. Um, it doesn't matter to that customer that it's a hay needle exclusive. They don't care. So we actually strip those types of things out of our content before we send it over to the Marketplace just to make sure that the experience kind of makes sense for that customer um, because ultimately they're not in our hay needle family and they don't necessarily care about the fluff, if you will, of a content on our core site. And I think um, I'm just going to speak to that as well. It's also not about what, it's not just about what the payload is, it's also about whether or not you even use certain uh, fields on your own site. A great example that we see all the time is many, many retailers will write feature bullets but they don't quantitatively store them. They're just part of the paragraph that they write in. But on Amazon, feature bullets are more important than descriptions. So if, you're, if you were gonna leave something out, you should, if you could only attack one thing, you'd write all your feature bullets and leave your description blank. But most sellers don't even think about it on their own site, or they may not even have bullets as their own field on their own site. So getting those formatted in the right way pays off, you know, in some cases we've seen 17% increases in, in revenue by having distinct feature bullets pulled out for Amazon. Sears, uh, do, I'm, I'm not sure if you want to talk about the most important com components for Sears. I think it's two things. The feature bullets are huge, huge because what they want to see is they want to see exactly what they're going to get and it's usually you know the functional piece. Secondly, images. Images Perfect. have to be right. Um, your example of the umbrella and patio chairs, I've seen that as well. Um, and you know, customers come on and sure, common sense is $49, but the reality is they're thinking they're getting the whole array. And then what happens? You get cancels, you get returns. Um, it's a downhill slope. Those are the two biggies in my mind. Negative reviews. Exactly. Negative reviews are Exactly killer. right. Yep. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, on the panel. And um, hope to see you more at the show. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.